Hello everyone, Andy Talaga here, bringing you a, two special guests, uh, Teacher and Rogue One. We're gonna go over a game here. Uh, this is Rogue One versus legendary Johnny Chu in the Premier to Cloud City Modified Tournament for the 2024 Retro League. So um, we're gonna do some gameplay analysis here. So I brought on a, a panel and uh, we'll get into it. Um, so. Misha, if you want to start. Um, all right, so we'll probably pause. Yep. Um, so I didn't quite get a good look at your locations, but it looked like there's probably like 10, 12 locations in there. Um, you know, uh, ice planes, like I like, I still don't really love ice plane start. Um, you know, it, it's hard to set up decree and hold decree, I think, um, to be honest. And um, I, I generally prefer the Death Star um, just for anti revolution. Like, people still might play revolution and like giving up going first on turn one isn't super awful um it's not like in later formats where throne room going first is just so good because you actually get location pulls or more activation like probably they're just going to activate three and draw and it's going to be your turn again so um but okay anyway so it looks like this is going to be a <clears throat> the standard uh mains and toys deck i can't really see all the stuff in your hand, but it looks like we got some sacks and yeah, some somewhat intentional that you can't see everything in the hand. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. so definitely a thought for Death Star start. I would argue, you know, you got to be able to defend it, which takes some resources. If they get Tantive early or a spy pilot, you know, draining for three is a challenge. Um, and I think mm -hmm. I would argue light sight is aside from executor, which takes 15 force to deploy. With Super Falcon floating around, Light Side may be somewhat advantage in space. So, you know, Light Side definitely has better ships, that's for sure. Um, but they only have, like, realistically, like, what do you have? You have Tantive, of course. Um, and then, as far as Falcon goes, like, you'd have to deploy it probably with Jerem Webb, right? That's the only yep. one you're going to get. Most likely. Them. So, you have like, two cards that are going to get you there unless they play their own system which they might but their own system is just going to be castle right and you're still going to face a drain of three at that location um unlikely that i just like <clears throat> i think the threat of them playing revolution on turn one on your ice planes when you can't do anything just ends the game straight up i can't wait all right i can't wait to watch this game with you guys all right. i'm gonna just press play we're gonna leave it there. <laughs> all right <laughs> no. i on the other hand don't mind ice planes yeah all right charlie you break the tiebreaker so ice planes is okay in charlie's book <laughs> yeah um although i do like the idea like i've noticed that um some people have been doing wampa cave and mm -hmm. i think the idea is that maybe if your opponent is doing first marker uh, if you do ice planes versus the first marker start, it's like a you know three activation for dark side, two for light side. But if you do Wampa Cave, then you get the fourth marker and the first marker. So now dark side is getting four. So increasing your efficiency by thirty three percent off the bat, like there's something to be explored there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but you're also giving light side thirty three percent more efficiency by you. Fifty percent more actually. Sorry, fifty percent. So like. That seems a lot worse. Like I'd rather light side be stuck on two force until they can dig their way out than give them an option of three force. Anyway, something to think about. Starting location. I mean, you, you think it's like an auto thing? It's really not. You got to think about where you're going to start and how you're going to play as a result of this. All right. So, and I didn't. I don't think I sped this up. But uh, his turn. I think he just draws up. And I don't get anything. I get two, and I draw. It. And then it's his turn. And guess what? He I remember this very vividly, because it was at this point I almost threw my computer against the wall. <laughs> but what is that last card in your hand right there? Yeah, that's uh, that's a surprise.
you can, yeah. I mean, surprise <clears throat> is definitely good. I like surprise. I play a surprise in my own deck. Um, I don't know that I would play multiple surprises. Um, and I feel like playing, like if you play two surprises, I don't really know what, I mean, you could surprise like a neighbor in Leeds, I guess, which is really good. But like playing multiple surprise just doesn't seem great. Uh, I'd rather just do something else. And like, if you don't have the surprise here and just save up three force to move the revolution to Obi's hut, man, you're in for a world of hurt, right? Yeah, but so here's my argument. You play the surprise and you hope for this scenario. I mean, that's why it's in your deck. So you yeah, got to bring... I, I think that I, that seems really risky and bad to me. Like, it's one out of 60 cards. <clears throat> you're, you're hoping that you get revolutioned on turn one. Like, the other... Well, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's hoping to get revolution on turn one. Yeah, on, I mean, you have... On, on, the, on the, the random occurrence that it happens, you have a... A like one in ten, 10 percent chance of uh, so like you're the other twelve times you play this game out and you don't have surprise you're just scooping. But the other twelve times you play it out, maybe he draws like two or three of those other locations right off the bat, and yeah. it doesn't really matter. And then yeah, I, I tend to agree with Charlie on this one, and I obviously I did have it. I had the answer. Feels good, you know. I wanted to show this to folks just simply to indicate that you know. Even with a really sh difficult start, you can pull a game out from what would otherwise be an unwinnable situation. I mean, right. Revo turn one without surprise in hand, you probably lose 99 out of 100. You play the card, you hope you get it in your hand, you hope for this scenario. And I think there's merit to that. If not, you know, we should all just play Vader and locations and that's it, right? I've, I've discovered a lot of additional uses for surprise in this uh, Cloud City modified format as well. It's a it's a really fun play with a clash of sabers. Yeah, definitely. Sure. I mean, I guess you re it only retargets to a different character on your side. You can't retarget it to their character. Yeah, but when they you know go to put like Vader to the curb, and you're like, actually no, and Tarkin survives this round. Yeah. All right. I mean, I just I don't like cards that are that high variance um, to like depend on them. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah, I play one of in a deck and I don't depend on it. And I don't recommend anybody depend on playing it. But I think arguably light side in this format shouldn't be depending on revolution either. Right. It's it shouldn't be fundamental to their win strategy. I wouldn't think. Re Revolution's really good. <laughs> Even with surprise running around, maybe I should run three surprises then. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and now you have the broken concentration in hand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I get that there's a bunch of ways to deal with revolution, right? Like evader and surprise and decree and stuff. I just think they're all. And of course, alter course alter right but i just feel like they're all a little bit clunky and very situational which i'm not really a fan of putting myself into that situation like i don't want to lose to my own cards by not being able to draw them when i need to uh, which is primarily why i still like death star start um because the death star start would not have put you into i mean you're clearly probably just going to win off of the back of that one surprise. Um, that's very evident, but um, yeah, I just, my mind just goes to, you have so many games where you just don't, where that just doesn't happen. You end up losing and scooping. I think it's a good, I think it's a very, it could be a very useful card in this environment. Sure. Um, I, think, I, I, I think we forget about a lot of the things that Surprise could have done because Gunite cancels Surprise. Man, I hate Gunite. Right. So they say <laughs> Gunite. So, you know, starting the interruption job is Palace, Gunite in Special Edition, and like basically, like, it's like Bathroom and Have I versus Gunite. Like, how many games did we see that in our lives? Right. Um, 
so surprise just was like a card i stopped looking at and yeah. with 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 as much of the little like battle interrupts and different targeting interrupt tricks in this environment um i have i have redirected somebody's sorry at the mess at like my ozzle instead of vader i redirected clash of saber uh, it's i've re i've moved effects around <laughs> so. yeah i mean i definitely think you play one for sure oh yeah um, like it, it's a great it's just a great it's a it's a swiss army knife card fantastic utility card and there's a lot of fantastic utility cards i i um think that you put yourself into a situation where like <laughs> if you don't have surprise there this game is just very over yeah but that's also then when you hope that you probably do some of your locations there's just yeah i mean i i guess i just Andy, i hear your point what you're saying is by and large revo is played by light side death star is a better start because it new it neuters their ability to play revo and you have an opportunity to draw into more of your deck and play more of the game totally right. hear that that said saying if i don't have it in my hand and he does we i don't know i just that's challenging he may only play one revo in his whole deck and if he happened to draw into it turn one like i don't sure. know i i think there's there's merit both ways oh my god and then you threw pio <laughs> and so there was a sack war there that you just won yeah 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 so we went back and forth over my own surprise i almost let it go through um but i figured if it was such a priority for him for the force that it was worth battling over um i almost didn't mind that much um but because he went after it i was gonna i was gonna battle for it and hope to win out which i had a lot more cards in hand i think yeah makes sense So for this environment, Andy, are you thinking like, have, like, what's the best line to take for amazing toys? Is it heavy sense soldier, like medium sense soldier with maybe a couple tricks, or like a few sense alter control with some grabbers? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm gonna drink my beer and listen to the answer. <laughs> so. I think there's only really going to be a couple of cards that you have to sense. Um, like, honestly, I don't even think light side really needs alter. What dark side card do you care about that you want to alter? Bad, bad feeling, feeling, I guess. Like, uh, well, kind of whatever, <clears throat> with bad feeling. All the light side characters deploy cheap enough that, like, doesn't really matter, right? Light, light side may want alter just because it does have the ability to cancel sense. Because I feel like light side, the only the third, like play. like as a as a protector of your interrupts, I think alter is good for light side. Yeah, um, I think control does a much better job at that, True. but it's a lower destiny, so you're making that trade off. Light side can then counter the fact that it has a lower destiny by including cards like smoke screen um but light side alter just seems not fantastic compared to what about some alter um, um, say what about like disarm for dark side on light side ob when they neighbor them over i think there's some utility there no well disarm's immune to alter Oh, it is? I didn't realize. I put yeah. it in. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> running, an altar, running an altar for no reason, then. <laughs> Literally the only card in Premiere that's, like, immune to altar. That's <laughs> bizarre. Know. I would just assume that it wasn't, because why, why would it be? the <laughs> only thing that's immune to altar? <laughs> but, like, Dark Side has well. much better options for altar, right? They've got yeah. um, <clears throat> Revolution, Beggar, uh, Mantan, Back to Tank, Proficiency, etc. So, like... <clears throat> If I'm on dark side, I want to play more altars. Stone pile. 
stone pile. Oh, yeah, stone and then pile. anybody who's trying to derp around with like a Kessel run or an our most desperate hour, which is if you're doing that, you should automatically win that game anyway. Um, but like light side has um, a lot more reason that they want to keep sense. Like light side sense is better than dark side sense. I think, I think <laughs> like, cause light side, one of the main paths to victory is going to be uncontrollable fury. Yeah. Right. Sort of like it's, it's a very good card and dark side is just going to go heavy on your beaten because your beaten is just fantastic against light side mains when they come down with like Obi and Luke and somebody and you just blow them out with a you are beaten, but you are beaten also just cancels Fury. Like you kind of just want to play like three copies of you are beaten, I think. And light side being able to sense that is great. And then light side also wants to defend all its effects. Right. And so sense canceling altar because dark side altar is probably better than dark side sense. So from a roundabout way, <clears throat> I think you, if your opponent's prepared for sense, like, I don't know what I want to say is, I think you want to play more than no copies of sense. You can't just rely on there is no try and control, right? You have to play some amount of sack. And just understand that if they put out there is no try and or do or do not, you're just going to eat two force loss probably two or three times in the game to counter the like the must counter card, right? Where if you don't counter it, you're just going to lose or put yourself in such a hole or your opponent's just going to be in such a winning position that eventually you'll lose. Um, so like losing six force to not die is probably the best solution um if you so you could either be both going like it's almost like the pod racing mechanic where like you could either be both pod racing one of you is pod racing and, many, and one of you is not or you're neither of you are pod racing so you could both be heavy sack in which case you're gonna have these like you're gonna have to like outdraw your opponent and if you think you're gonna have to face against like a heavy sack deck you just have to go over the top you need to play like 15 16 sack in your deck because you have to win the sack war um if you don't it's just a, a huge force loss for you because all of those things go lost yes i have a question professor <laughs> yeah all right so I think what you're speaking to is like what your win strategy with your deck consists of and mm -hmm. understanding that shades how you approach sack in general, right? I mean, that's kind of what I'm hearing you say. Uh, yes. I mean, your winning strategy for 90% of games, unless you're a teacher and you come up with some like absolutely crazy deck is exactly what you're doing. You put Vader with a lightsaber at a drain two site and you sit there for 15 turns and drink for three. That's how most games are won, right? Maybe you spread out to a couple of sites and you end up draining for, you know, six or seven over the course of a turn and the game ends on turn nine. But that's how you're going to win games, right? Force straining ends games. Um, and so your, your overall strategy is just, I'm going to play my characters and force strain and we might have two battles this whole game. And if you do that, then yes, you need to go heavy sack. If your plan is to actually just like go and fight your opponent on every battleground and try to block drains by battling, as you probably need like a medium amount of sack. Like you need to be able to counter their one I have you now that they're going to play or their clash or their you are beaten, right? Um, if you're playing heavy sack, you also need to be able to fight against Grim Tash and Monarch. So you have to have more sack. It's just kind of cyclical that way. Um, I just don't think you can do no sack like or like three altars plus two tentacles like you could get away with in Premier to Hoth. Like I just that's not a good good way to approach the format, I think. Yeah, so let's you bring up grabbers as a anti sack maneuver. Can we talk through that? I was I, I appreciate somebody knowing more about it, explaining it to me. I think there's merit there. 
like what that strategy is. Yeah. So like, how do you successfully play with, with, you know, the two grabbers, the, the varying, so you have grappling hook and, and uh, whatever. Well, the other the, one is. Held a pay and push on us are, in my opinion, unplayable in this format. Okay. Then three so force. Why? So you have to sit there and save three force so every, every turn until they play something and until you can finally grab it. Um, saving three force for that is just not worth it, right? I would rather just draw more cards into my hand and have more options or play more things out onto the table to make my opponent have to like figure out a better strategy by utilizing my force. If I save three force and just pass the turn, I, that's three force. I mean, I get that I could use it on a future turn, like, like to play something like, you know, executor now it costs 15 and I've used up all of my force. So like I've, I've saved some of it, but if I just pass the turn and then next turn activate 10 and use nine of it, like I just wasted my resources somehow. Like I'd have to, like, I want to draw those cards and do something better um, to come up with a better strategy to win the game. So saving three force just seems rough. Um, I agree. Although and, I just have to interject. I lost to a Walker deck that he grabbed my, he don't, or whatever, uh, held a pay on my sense when he, when I tried to sense his, you are beaten. And then I had nothing and he played Walker Garrison next turn and I had no force save to be able to play the sense that I had in my hand against his Walker Garrison. So, I mean, that all said, there are ways to make it work. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> when when it grabs something and now you have to pay more force, it's good. Won the game. Right? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. I just... I don't want to sit there and save three force every turn until I grab the one card um, that I would rather just like, if I, like, my plan is just to grab that card, grab sense, grab Walker, you know, whatever it is. Why wouldn't I just play another copy of sense in my deck and just, yeah, no, or just I play agree. sense. Right. And then I'm just drawing more cards. I have more options for my own strategy. I have more information about how I'm going to win the game. And then I can present more threats to my opponent. That just seems like a much better plan, you know? Um, so like the tentacle version, you're probably just going to play like two or three cents, two or three altars and like two or three tentacles. And you play something you know, they play something, you, you alter it and <clears throat> how many, uh, how many controls would you put in to like that, that ratio? So I feel like, I feel like in a tentacle look like a tentacle low sense alter, um, the game plan, uh, control becomes a more powerful card. Yeah. Control in that I'd probably play like four controls. I don't I just don't like having unless because like that deck then becomes really susceptible to Monarch and Grim Tash. Yes, it does. Right. Oh, yes. Whereas, whereas if you have like 12 senses and altars, you're a lot less susceptible to Monarch. Um, so like you want to have the controls, but you don't have a lot of controls. And control being a destiny two just sucks, man. That, yes. that it just <laughs> blows every time you draw control for a destiny. You're just like, God, you're terrible. <laughs> um, so, yeah, probably like four controls, three altars, one or two senses, and like two or three tentacles. But at that point, you're at what twelve cards. Why not just play heavier sack and not forego the tentacle plan um, so roundabout way to answer that we don't really know it all depends it depends, you know, it depends on how you want to build the deck <laughs> totally and, and yeah i think that was kind of my question and there's, point there's is merit that, to both there's, totally. there's definitely merit to both of them i think there's no merit to don't play any sense or alter right and you're just asking for hurting. All right, we were meant to review this video, so I'm going to keep right. playing it. There's not much here. And again, this was not just an opportunity for me to show off. I don't care. It was more for these conversations because I think they're worthwhile.
It's interesting that you just like never use reactor terminal. I don't know what I, else you're in your hand, but it just seems like I think I liked everything I had was <laughs> part of it and I felt comfortable against Monarch. I, like I was like interesting. Was... Visage of the Emperor coming. I wonder why, why do you Monarch used there? Just because I was ahead. <clears throat> Is that, did, did he have 14 cards in hand at that point in time? Cards. Yeah, see, I, okay. right there, I still would have held that Monarch, and then if he played one card, I would have then Monarch used at that point to disrupt his deployment plan. That's interesting. I didn't think that through. That That's a good takeaway. If they've got, let him get one card out, see what they're doing, and then Monarch them. Yeah. Um, because it's some of so my, so my favorite uses is the monarch. It doesn't happen yeah, very often, but when it does, it's 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 a blast. Yeah, that's that's a cool game line. And I think he's unless he plays OB, he is not necessarily setting himself up any better for Zach. So I don't really care what else he's playing. It's I'm still gonna likely get my monarch through. Yeah, so like Johnny's probably, Johnny's probably, do you think Johnny has like a force strong with this one and a little bit of sense alter to try to defend it? Yeah, that's what I would imagine he's got, you know, try to kill Vader and then hope to come down with Obi. And if he didn't have, to, if he doesn't have to sense alter to defend his, I, uh, I have you now or whatever the light side version is, then you can try and get rid of the revolution again. Um, but yeah, I got to imagine that he's got to put you on a heavy sense. He, he, yeah, he's just he's just trying to hopefully he he top X a five or something like he just you know. I think he conceded there. I thought there was more game. Oh, did he concede thought, there? Yeah, that's weird. I don't know what happened. Let's try this one more time. That's very bizarre. You guys didn't see any more of that, did you? No, I, it's I, just, uh, you just passed it. There it is. I swear oh there was more game. Uh, do you see, see the tables that Frodo has posted right now for Clouds yeah, to Modify? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't get a look. What? What is it? It's andytalaga.com, lol, teacher.net, <laughs> and who's got... That's awesome. <laughs> well, like you switched to that screen really quick, and I saw a teacher on there. I was like, "Wait, what? What is that?" Like, <laughs> I don't have a table posted. <laughs> I, I do not. Oh, that's funny. I yeah, I think I think I think, he, I, I think, I think he, if I recall correctly, I think he moved Luke over and then just tipped the king over to you. Is that? I could have, maybe it was a different game that I played. I thought he played um, some space sports speeders and. Or maybe maybe that must have been something else. So I guess that was it. Maybe there wasn't more of this game than I thought there was. Yeah, I don't, to be honest, I don't see Johnny Chu on a Space Sports Peters deck. I was yeah, it must have been a different opponent. So he yeah, played some, he plays some. It, 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 may, it, may, it may have been my alt. Right. Oh, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> Teacher's got like fifteen alts. It's probably. <laughs> I, have, I have one. One. Oh, well, your secret is safe with me. Um, I've, I've publicly said what it is. It's uh, Diet Mountain Dew. Okay. Oh, that's right. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so, not yeah. people are going to be able to do this game. Pretty much. Um, so from my perspective, you know, play your surprise. I think Revo is in a weird spot in this meta with surprise being part of the game. I think he, as a light side player, you have to think about it. Yeah. Um, and don't don't quit on a game when you have a bad play or when you have a bad, you know, the opponent sets up a good game line for them, it doesn't necessarily mean the game is over. And I think there's, as a new player, that's important to remember. Yeah. I mean, I'd be interested to see what Johnny Chu's hand was like. He drew out, he's before the, before you surprise, right? Cause he's, he played revolution on what turn two. Yeah. Right? Turn one. First turn. 
Yeah, his first it, turn, his first his three first turn. Yeah. So he plays Revolution, then you activate one and pass. I, I just probably play Luke to Obi's hut at that point, right? I mean, I'm not trying to question Johnny Chu's play lines, but he looks like he's playing senses and altars, right? And you put Luke down and just fish for a lightsaber and sit there and drain for one until something happens, like getting Obi. When then when you try to surprise, obviously you have you know a bunch of senses and altars, but you won't have any character yeah. you can't sense to start yeah. with. So you can't even so he can just sense your surprise and then <laughs> you get into like this alter battle yeah. instead of and, senses. But well the uh, the other advantage there is if he were to have dropped a loop down at like the hut on turn two or drain. three. Um if Misha gets to the point where he has that surprise in hand, he's like, okay, I can surprise it away from my ice plans to get my force generation. But in doing so, I'm now giving light side a drain three location. Yep. Right. And I mean, I don't know what Johnny Chu has in his hand. Like he, he, he activates out of this kind of, right. He gets another two O site. He gets the cantina. The cantina sucks for him because you just drop Vader and Saber and drain him for three for the rest of the game. But like, he gets back up to a five force and he just literally plays nothing for the rest of the game. So it's like, where's your, where's your OB? Where's your, any, maybe, maybe he got jumped. Could be. Probably. I mean, yeah. hundred percent. That's the only way I beat him. He beats me uh, 99 out of a hundred. This is the one off. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. No, just so like that. There are times where like I, I have 11 or 12 locations in a deck and I have driven, drawn up half my deck and I have got, one location yeah like it i happens. think the conversation oops i think part of the reason why i wanted to share this with you guys is you know there are going to be instances where you get just hosed and you can continue to play through them like that doesn't necessarily mean the game is over and mm -hmm. i think I, for myself it seems like i want ccg to be a quick like one and done victory and it's very seldom the case so like it's worth you know, you don't need to concede immediately if things don't go your way, I guess is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you just concede because you're like, there's no point in playing this out. <laughs> to that like, I, I, I could maybe eke out a win, but I'm better served. Like, it might take me an hour and 10 minutes of playing to eke out a win. I could probably just go play like three games where I don't have to sit there and try to win by one differential. Yeah. Where you beat me three times in a row instead. <laughs> Save your time. <laughs> yeah. well, I, um, I don't know if you boys have any additional thoughts, anything else you wanted to, to go through? I mean, it seems like it was a very straightforward game. You executed your plan of- Would you mind uh, refreshing to start again and just pausing on the location select? Yeah, totally. Uh, you should just be able to refresh the, the URL and that'll restart the, the play. Yep. So that, oh. You that double clicked. <laughs> so that's what I'm running. Interesting. So nine locations? Yeah. And, and only and so you so you are you're only supplying three of your own battleground site four sorry lower quarter I always forget about that one um <laughs> I'm I think I'm running like thirteen locations in my day yeah me too yeah I would I would actually <laughs> and I have since gone back and upped the total number here. Um, yeah, because like you start with one, so you start with ice planes. It leaves you with eight locations left, and you're gonna draw eight cards. It's like roughly one in nine, one in one in eight cards is gonna be a location. So you might get one location in your opening hand. You might not. And then, so if you activate three and draw, you'll probably get one location by that point. But then you have to play the location. 
So you won't get actually use out of it until turn three. And at that point, you only have seven left. You can discount the cards that you have in your hand because obviously none of those are locations. And so you're probably at like 46, 47 cards left, right? Which means that it's like a one in seven shot to get another location. And like, you know, so by the time you activate to seven, draw, and then draw, like you just, you can't build momentum yeah. to get enough force activation. Like the whole game is about resource management, which is your force. Yes, definitely. Um, and it's also in that calculus, there's mm -hmm. also some um, locations that you may want to play you may want to hold and not necessarily drop right away, like lower right. quarter for instance. Right. So like that even, um, that makes the math even harder in, in my favor. So um, is this, this yeah, is definitely. the deck that, was this the deck that you sent me the other night when I was like, yeah. what deck should I play? You're like, play my deck. I was like, okay, yeah. okay. Yep. This is the same one. I made yeah. it, I want to continue to tech on it, but yeah, oh, sure. basically the same deck. Yeah, so like I, yeah, he sent me this deck and I looked at it really quickly and I, started Wampa Cave and my game basically I had Vader with a saber at the Wampa Cave and I was just playing like the control game as best as I could. Um and then finally I think took over like the juggling waste and the ice planes to drain out. But like yep. yeah, Vader never I don't think Vader ever battled that game, but it was also like against like some space tech, I think, right? Yeah, and then I played, it's funny, I played him the next morning. <laughs> it was like the exact same match. <laughs> Having watched your game with my deck, I then played the same person, and I think I beat him as well. Uh, but yeah, it was a light side space. Um, so I think Vader Vader at a site with a saber is good pretty much all the way through the game, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah, I will say that in the games where I only draw one other location in my opening hand, it's always the lower corridor, and I'm never oh. going to put it down. Yeah. Same. So, much. so yeah, I would and considering that one of your locations is a duplicate, I would because then the second one doesn't really count. It's kind of like half a location, right? A location for drawing stuff. Uh, you probably need you probably need some more sites in here. And I've added them, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> Good point. Good. Um, awesome. Well, I don't have any other thoughts on this. Thank you for getting your replay. Appreciate it. Yeah, oh, I, I have some thoughts, though. All right. Uh, Go for it. Teacher. You got three people here that are undefeated so far in the uh, premiere to Class City Modified League, and uh, two of them are tied for first place, apparently, based off of strength of schedule. So congratulations. And I'm not one of them. <laughs> Congra I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. To, uh, to our... Um, I did. I did beat like, some tough opponents. The, well, the kind yeah. of like the, the creator of the format. So, so, okay, so thank you for this. It's been a fun format. I really yeah. enjoyed it. All right. 100%. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs>